Hello, everybody, and welcome to DC Time. I'm Dean. I'm Chris. Thanks for joining us. Chris and I are here together, uh, renewing our minds. It's great to get together with you, as always. It's great to get together with Chris and uh, look into some scriptures. We've looked at these just recently here in Ephesians. Uh, we're going to read some of those and, and just talk about that. Um, like I said, it is so wonderful to be able to do these things because mm -hmm. this life does get chaotic. It does get crazy at times. Um, Chris made a good comment just a few minutes ago thinking about people and all the things that we all go through as humans here on this earth. And whatever you're going through is very, you know, it can be very important to you individually and it can be also devastating to you. And so as we share some of these truths, you know, we're kind of, we remind ourselves of that. It, and we both said, I think just today here, sometimes it's difficult to, to share some of these things with somebody that's hurting so bad. Because mm -hmm. there's so many questions. Why all the evil? Why all the hurt? Why all the pain? Uh, we ask those things too at times of devastation. Um, but we think Father's in control. He, Father has a plan, knows exactly what he's doing. His son trusted him, Christ trusted him, and we can look to him yep. Yep. and look as our head of what he's doing now, and we can look to him and all the things that Paul writes about him, uh, be comforted comforted by those words, and that's what we're going to do today. It reminds me of the words, bear with one another, you know, yeah. the, the importance of our unity and what we get from that. And we say all the time, all of this is progressive and any, all, any of us can be at any different place, crossroads, circumstances that God is operating in all of our lives and we could find ourselves in a devastating place and we're going to need one another. Uh, so, yeah, sometimes when we look at these things and they're exhorting us to be thinking of above things above and I'm thinking, wow, I know people right now who can't get over their very temporal circumstances right now because they're so devastating. And I don't know what other than to tell them that I'm, I'm thinking of them and that I'm bearing with mm -hmm. them through, through this. It's just tough. Exactly. All right. Let's read Ephesians 4. I think we read this a week or two ago. We're going to read it again. I am entreating you then, I, the prisoner in the Lord, to walk worthily of the calling with which you were called, with all humility and meekness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, so Christus said, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit. We brought this out just recently. Um, and and that's, that's a really neat thing to think about, to just settle on, to keep the unity of the Spirit. There is a such a thing as the Spirit and such a thing as the unity of the Spirit. You don't make it. You don't create it. Mm -hmm. You don't assemble together based on certain beliefs. And I mean, humans do that. We all do that. Yeah. You assemble together, of course, you know, if you agree with each other on things. This is talking about something different. Yeah. Um, so endeavor to keep that, the unity of the Spirit. By the way, you know... <laughs> when you're experiencing some of that, the unity of the Spirit with each other. Um, mm. And that, that is an awesome, awesome thing, too. Then all that stuff falls away. Everything falls exactly. away. All the silliness that we're caught up in today's world. Yeah. All of these circumstances that are devastating, but they are, those things can go away. Okay. <laughs> Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit with the tie of peace, one body and one Spirit, according as you were called also with one expectation of your calling. Um, what's awesome about that, you hit on that, uh, keep the unity of the Spirit. And then I'm looking at Knox commentary, and on that he says, we are not asked to make the Spirit's unity, but not to break it. And, you know, how many times have you read that and you go right over keep mm -hmm. the unity? You don't settle in on that word keep it, which means you didn't make it. You're keeping it. 
-hmm. So it's been made. It's, we're told not to break it. God's saints are one. Let them be assiduous to recognize this by refraining from anything which mars the display of the spiritual unity made by God. Now that assiduous, I wanted to look that up. It says showing a great care and perseverance. So you could read it as let them be show great care and perseverance to recognize this by refraining from anything which mars the display of the spiritual unity God has made. That's pretty cool. That is. So it's point. even, I mean, he, again, his operation makes it, and yet they ask, he asks us to keep it. Don't break it. Right. I think I was so caught up in... You know, it's easy to get caught up in um, doing things to, you know, find like-minded people or find, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a natural thing. You're going to connect with people based on likes or, and things like, things like that. But I know I was caught up so much probably in my past and then until recently really caught up in, um, well, that unity was there, if, you know, if everybody agreed or right? everybody got together, banded together around certain things and then oh now here's this unity and I was trying to almost create that. Mm -hmm. I just know I was personally doing that just with my language I could tell with yeah. others. Yeah. Um and trying to get people to see things, you know, my right. way, so right. to speak. Instead of, you know, an opportunity just to to be there, like you said, you might want to be there or, and love somebody. See what they're actually going through. See what they're thinking. Um so like I said, we're all, we all are in this as far as this world full of, you know, these problems that we deal with in the relative view here. Yeah. We're not escaping it. Um, right. I, I'm, I'm thinking of the times I'm with loved ones, with people, and they're going through a horrific situation. And my personality wants to be so, I want to say something that provides peace. I want to ease that moment. And today, I think back to A.P. Adams talking about being still. And sometimes the only thing we can be is still and know that I am God. And sometimes that may be our best response because it means we're there, we're present. If that means just crying with them, that is sort of this, what we're, what we're talking about here. I, I just may not have the words as much as I'd like mm -hmm. to ease that moment. But how about I be still, let the spirit of unity take over, mm -hmm. and I'll just bear with you. Exactly. And like I said, there, there's no way to do it, uh, do something wrong or right or whatever in the absolute view as far as mm -hmm. how God's going to reveal himself. He's going to reveal himself to everybody eventually. Right. Everyone's going to come on. In their order, yep. Yeah, to these wonderful truths that Paul's talking about. Uh, we've yet to learn. You know, like I said, we're just scratching the surface of some of these wonderful things we're going to experience. But everybody's going to come on to this and, and see the love of the Father. Is what we think. And so the, the tiniest, the smallest comment can start somebody's journey. We've mentioned that in our, you know, as we've oh, come yeah. on to some things. Yeah. And other people has too, which is so cool. It's just a comment. Like you yeah. made a comment to me or somebody says something right. just in passing about, you know, what if Jesus really is the Savior of all? Mm -hmm. What if God's plan worked? God wants everybody to be saved. What if it's going to work? What if everybody gets saved? Just a comment to somebody mm -hmm. could start them looking into things. And, and we just talked about, it might have been last week's show, we just talked about we were believers chosen before the disruption. So you could say we were always believers, but just what yeah. you said, it, it jump-started or it kick-started when someone said something. I watched uh, Catherine's interview with Wes Fallenkamp this morning. And Wes said something, I want to say he said in 91, something happened and he found himself uh, pursuing God. 
he found himself not being able to uh, not do that. Mm -hmm. it, it was, uh, it sounded like something overwhelming to be checking and looking. And I thought, boy, that's very similar mm -hmm. how I feel like it happened for me. Uh, the evidence was that I, I couldn't just let it lie. I had to keep coming back and looking at a new scripture or something new. And that's now been going on 25 years. I'm still in pursuit. I, th I think it's still that A.P. Adams thing. I'm acquainting myself with the Father. And Father is acquainting himself with me. You know, it's that pursuit. And I appreciated what, what Wes said about that. All right. Here, uh, I just looked ahead. Well, he's in Ephesians 4. What about Ephesians 5? Become then imitators of God as beloved children and be walking in love according as Christ also loves you and gives himself up for us, an approach present, and a sacrifice to God for a fragrant odor. Mm -hmm. So, that's cool. talked about too. The, yeah, that's The approach great. present. Yeah, the approach present, yeah. Which mm -hmm. is, that's what? just crazy. Yeah. Uh, when you look into that approach present. Um, just down from that, um, oh, yeah, 5, 8, read, 9. One, yeah, 5, 8. Yeah, I wanted. I'll touch on it. You read five, eight, and uh, five, chapter five, verses eight and nine. Okay, it says, "Do not then become joint partakers with them, for you were once in darkness, yet now you are light in the Lord." This was talking about before mm -hmm. um, the sons of stubbornness. Yeah. Do not become joint partakers with them. You were once in darkness, yet now you are light in the Lord. Right, and as children of light, be walking. For the fruit of light is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Now, that's cool. But here Knox says, To behave as children of light is the complement of imitating him as beloved children. For God is light as well as love. In nature, light is indispensable for fruit. Nothing will produce without it. The same is true in spiritual things. The most flourishing saint is the one who has the most light, who knows what his Lord's will is. The most strenuous endeavor to serve God will not meet his approval if it is out of line with his revealed purpose and plans. Let us rouse ourselves from our lethargy and the darkness which surrounds us and bask in the light of Christ. Just a few shows ago, we talked about light inaccessible. Mm -hmm in the celestials. I mean, he is going to be the light that lights everything up. Uh, I was reading in the, in the kingdom. This is all Jewish stuff, but I was reading the kingdom. There's going to be no more night one day. <laughs> no more night. No more sickness, all those different mm -hmm. things. But this was all about the kingdom that was promised, that was coming down. And I guess I'd forgotten, <laughs> forgotten that, but there'll be no more night. It'll be the light of God all the time. Uh, I thought that was kind of cool. That was cool. That, uh, that was cool what you read there. I, yeah, I, I really like did the, like that. The darkness which surrounds us is kind of how we started here. That, and that is true. That's the day we're in. Man's right. day. Man's know? day, yeah. This darkness that surrounds us. Um, yeah. But the light, the light that we find in Christ that gives us peace. And it's so cool to read these things now. Oh, I know. And, instead of looking the way I did, you know, as we grow up, like I said, in religion, and you start talking about behavioral things, and it's all about trying not to sin and just behave better, and you'll be a witness to somebody yeah. and all yeah. that. And we're not talking about that here. We're not just talking about um, try to do better because and God's going to like you more or things like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, performance. Yeah. yeah, we're not talking about performance. Yeah. Uh, things like that. But like I said, we're surrounded in this darkness. The light, when you look to the light, see the light, sense the spirit of Christ, that brings peace. Yeah. Um, and you do. You want that to come out of you, of us. We, we, there's a desire for that to happen. We pray for that to happen, as Paul did too, uh, for you and for others. And Yeah, look, look at here, at, uh, uh, Ephesians 4, uh, verse 7. This will be the last thing I read, but this is really cool. This is talking about the readjustment of the saints. And we've talked about being adjustable in what we believe, 
because we think all of this stuff is progressive. And this is a beautiful paragraph that sort of sums some of this stuff up in that, in those parentheses. The readjustment of the saints, changing them from a condition of tutelage and dependence on the blessings of Israel to mature manhood and independent celestial blessings was affected by sending them specially endowed apostles and prophets, pastors and teachers. This was a time period. This was how God was doing this. The service of the apostles and prophets is now superseded by the scriptures themselves, such as this epistle, which were written to accomplish the same end. This is in contrast to giving the law, which brought them into captivity, Psalms 68, 18. This grace sets aside all enslaving laws and decrees. So this is really telling you how God was operating at a specific time when he gave pastors, prophets, apostles, teachers, and now we have, it's superseded by the scripture, by word itself. That's why we say he tabernacles in us, you know. And our authority is the word. No man but the word. Christ is our authority. Yeah, you look to Christ. He's our head. We look to our head. That's right. There's no other. There's no other that you're under. Yeah. Or that you have to look to. Exactly. It's a spirit thing. And you can tap into that, whoever you are out there. You might think, oh, you have to know all these things. No. No, no nothing. You know, no, and that's what, what Wes was it's saying. It's not a behavioral thing or that, any of that. When he started realizing that he could look and something could be revealed and he could, then, then you just look for the next thing mm -hmm. and then the next thing. And that's that's been my uh, understanding too. So scripture is my tutor, tutor now. You know, it's the one that's that's teaching me. Obviously, in the absolute view, God is opening my eyes and granting me uh, to see certain things at a certain time. So yeah, Father's got to keep showing us what these words. Mean. <laughs> yeah, I got to. It's a darn good thing yeah. we have the yeah. internet so we can look these up so quickly. <laughs> all right. Well, we love y'all. Uh, thanks for joining us, and we'll see y'all next week. All right. Take care. Love y'all.